Hey everyone, it's Joy here with another Lawn Fawn video. Today I made a snow globe shaker using the platform pop-up die and it is so super cute. Okay, I'm gonna start by coloring my images with Copic markers. This is from the Snow Globe Scenes stamp set. And I am going to be coloring two trees because I want to have them uh, a glued to each other so you're going to see this shaker from both sides front and back i'm going to use acetate on both sides so i need two trees but i actually ended up having to do this tree the second tree a little bit differently which i'll show you here in just uh, a little bit so i'm using my copic mu uh, markers i am coloring on lawn fawn's white cardstock with their jet black ink it is copic friendly and we've got this cute Christmas tree. We're going to have red, yellow, and blue bulbs. Of course, we've got that nice little star on top. And then the cute little Christmas tree on the snowbank. And then I have a bunch of those snowflakes that I colored because we're going to put those all around. I want the base of my snow globe to look silver. Even though you end up not seeing too much of it, I still needed to color it in. So I'm just using some uh, light gray markers to get that silver look. So I'm using C2, 4, and 6 for that. Then I'm going to use the coordinating dies to die cut these out. And I'm going to show you how I die cut out the hole. There's a great die that comes with this set to die cut out the hole in the snow globe if you don't want a white background. I'm also going to color this cute little fox. This is from the snow globe scenes as well. And I will just fussy cut him out a little bit later because I just need him and I don't need that little hill behind him. And he is the perfect size to go with the snow globe tree. So I'm just going to finish coloring him and he's going to have a little red scarf. And I decided to do a Christmas card because, you know, Christmas in July. So I thought it would be absolutely perfect for this cute little card. Okay, so you have your full die here that's going to cut out your whole snow globe. So I'm going to put that in place, tape that down, run that through my die cut machine. Then you have the center piece here that I'm going to center right in there, tape that in place, and then run that through the die cut machine. And then that's going to have a nice open area. If you just want to stamp your images on that background without die cutting it out, you absolutely could. Okay, so I have a die cut tree. I am going to put the stamp in and I kind of, I flipped this over because you're going to need to stamp on the back of your die cut. So I'm going to ink that up and I'm just using that on my Misty just to kind of see where everything lines up. And then I can put my piece of die cut cardstock back in. Again, you're going to be stamping on the back side of that die cut. And then I'm going to color it the same as I colored the other tree. Now I have two pieces of acetate die cut from that large piece that's going to die cut the, the whole snow globe. And then I've die cut a bunch of these. So how I did that was I laid both of those uh, dies together and I taped it in place and then just die cut a bunch of those opened snow globes. And I'm going to glue these together. This is going to give me the dimension to have all of my shaker bits in. And I believe I had 10 pieces total that I glued together. That includes the front that we colored and then a back piece. So I'm gonna have two pieces of acetate uh, front and back. Now there is an add-on die for this that will just die cut for a shaker, but I didn't have that. So this is how I solved that problem. So I'm gonna finish gluing that together. And when I'm done, you're gonna see how thick, I've never made a shaker this thick, but it's actually perfect on this platform pop-up die. So now that it's all glued together, you can see how thick that is. So it's your choice if you wanna go that thick. Now I'm gonna add the acetate behind that front stamped and colored image for the snow globe. And I'm going to adhere that together. And then I have the back piece that's also going to have a piece of acetate because this is gonna be a completely see-through snow globe. So it's gonna look like an actual snow globe sitting on its base when it's on this platform pop-up die. Then I can adhere this to the back 
and then we can fill it up with our little shaker bits and then add the trees and all of that. So I'm gonna glue these two trees together. I had already colored the one side and then I flipped it over realizing that they didn't match unless I flipped it around and showed you the other way. So I'm going to adhere those two together. And then I can adhere that after I put in the little shaker bit. So I have large sequence and then, or large glitter, excuse me, and then I have some white and blue seed beads. Now you can also add a little bit of a powder tool inside if you don't want your pieces to stick, but I actually don't mind that because I feel like it makes the snow globe look a little frosty. I'm putting the tiniest bit of liquid glue because I don't want it to squish out onto my acetate, but now I'm going to put the top on and really push it down to really get a good adhesion. And now we've got this great little shaker snow globe that you can see from the front and back. Okay, here is the platform pop-up die. Let's get this together. I've die cut everything ahead of time, so I die cut. You need two of those big base pieces to make your pop-up die, or your pop-up, yeah, your pop-up platform. Then I have these little pieces that go on the side and the front that's gonna have the sentiments. I have the snowy hills, and then I have the tea pieces. The snowy hills were die cut from the pixie dust cardstock. Now I'm going to fold on all of the score lines, folding away from myself for both of these platform pieces. Again, you need two of these to build your platform. So I'm folding on the score lines that the die cut already creates for you. So it makes it super, super easy. And then I have my T pieces. We're only gonna use one right now, so I'm gonna fold that on its score line. Now let's add some score tape to this. We want really strong adhesive, and so score tape is really kind of the way to go. You could use liquid glue, but I feel like this is much better. So I'm gonna put it on those two tabs. I'm going to flip over that T piece, flip it over, and then slide it through that little slot. Then you have this score line here that you're gonna fold up. It's your first score line. I'm going to make sure that T tab is pulled tightly at the top, remove the release paper, and then push that down. Then we can remove the other release paper and we're going to fold up on the next large score line. So right there we're going to push that up, fold that up, and then that top piece is going to tuck down and then you can push that down and let that adhere. And now you have one side to your platform pop-up die. And I'm gonna show you again one more time on the other side. So I've folded that T piece, that little tab. I'm adding the score tape to both of these tabs. I'm gonna flip that T piece over and slide it through that little hole. I'm gonna fold on that first large score line. I'm gonna pull that T tab nice and tight and nice and straight, remove the release paper and push that down. Then I'm going to move the release paper on the top tab, slide that up one more, and then push that in place. Okay, so you have your third T piece. I'm going to fold it on the score line and trim that bottom piece off. And we're going to line this up with some score tape right below one of the other T pieces. So I'm going to re remove that release paper and then just line that up, making sure they're nice and even. So now we'll have three tab T pieces for our platform pop-up die. Okay, so now I'm gonna add some score tape on those little flaps. And then on the piece that does not have the extra T, we're gonna add some foam, or some score tape to that, not foam tape, score tape. So I'm gonna add a couple pieces of that. Then I'm gonna remove the release paper on one of these tabs, line that up, push it over and adhere it. Then I'm gonna remove the release paper from the one side of the pop, the platform pop-up die, and I just like to hold it and line up the bottoms to make sure it's nice and straight. And then I can push that down, and then we're gonna remove the release paper off of the other tab, and put it right underneath and push that down. And now you've got your platform pop-up die, you guys. Super easy and so much fun. I just love this interactive die. Okay, I have a piece of chili pepper cardstock. I have those little rectangle and squares that I die cut earlier from the platform pop-up die. I'm just going to adhere this to this red cardstock. I want a nice little red mat around each one of these little rectangles and squares. This is where I'm going to be stamping my sentiments for the platform pop-up die. So I have those in my Misty. 
and I am using the Reveal Wheel Holiday Sentiments. The one on the front, the largest rectangle, is going to say Merry Christmas, and then I have Holly Jolly and Warm and Cozy, and I am stamping that with Lobster Ink. So we're going to bring some red into this because that background is a nice kind of crispy turquoise uh, Christmassy color and I love a red with that. So let's pop these in place. I'm just using some some adhesive to adhere those down. Just my tape runner and now you can see that we've got all these fun Christmas sentiments. I'm adding a little bit of score tape to the bottom of my shaker and because it's so thick you want some serious tape. I'm adhering that to that center T piece that's popped up and then I have my little snow drifts here. Again, this is die cut from Pixie Dust cardstock. And I'm going to add those to the front, to the back, and to the front of the shaker piece. And then we've got our cute little guy that I ended up fussy cutting out. And I have him adhered to the front. And I'll show you guys in just a second. It's hard to put these cards together when you need to see what you're adhering. So I'm going to add my last little snow drift right in front of that shaker. And then I've got one for the back. And I'm just using score tape for all of those because I don't want these to move or go anywhere. So isn't that so, so cute? And it folds down nicely, pops up nicely, even though that is a heavy, heavy snow globe. And then we have all of these little snowflakes that I colored. I'm going to adhere a couple of them together because I want to attach these to the snow globe and you will see that really the front and the back. So I didn't want a white snowflake on the back. So I had glued two of those together and then adhered that to the top of the snow globe. And then I'm going to do a smaller one and adhere that to the side of the snow globe. Adding these little snowflakes are, is just the finishing touch. I'm just gonna put a ton of them all over on the snow drifts and it really just adds a lot of fun, cute detail. So these ones I am not going to glue together to where it's double sided because most of these are going to be adhered all the way onto the snow. Some of them will be above that. So if you wanted to do that double sided, obviously just color and die cut more of these snowflakes. So I'm going to add a few more, a couple more to the front of the snow globe on the snow drift and then two on that back snow drift where you can see them so it's off to the sides. And then I'm just gonna finish this with this one more little snowflake. And then you guys can see how cute this card is. And it really was super easy to make. And look at that, you've got that cute little fox staring up at the snow globe tree. You can see this tree in the background or from behind. And then you have all of those little snowflakes and you have a shaker. And it closes down nicely. To fit in your envelope. Super, super cute. I hope that you guys enjoyed this project and I hope that you feel inspired. Thank you so very much for watching and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.